Okay guys, welcome to episode 2. Uh, today we're going to uh, introduce you guys to variables and data types in Java. So, if you haven't watched the last few episodes and you don't really know what's going on here, you can check the uh, playlist in the description and yeah, basically get up to speed with where we are now. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder for this uh, project. New folder. We're going to call it episode 2. Enter. And new, oh, new file. Not search in directory. And we can call it main.java. And uh, we're going to create our class. So we call it class main. As we uh, remember from the last episode, this uh, this class name must be identical to the file name. Uh, so we call it main and our main function. So we're basically where we were at uh, when we left off the last episode. So uh, Java has several data types. All right, so let's make a variable. Now, what is a variable? A variable, you can think of it like a box where you can put stuff and this variable or this box has a name on it which takes one specific type of data. So one of the simplest ones are strings, for instance. So we declare a new string variable and we call it my variable or my var is equal to just um, quotation marks and a semicolon and we'll call it hello world with an excla exclamation mark so let's print that out on the screen uh, which is system dots out dot print ln parentheses and semicolon and we'll print my var like this. Save your project, go over to your command prompt and uh, change to episode 2 directory. Thank you. And uh, now we'll just do java with the c uh, main.java. Enter and it should compile very well. Painfully slow computer today. And now we'll do Java main. This will run our program and it prints hello world, which is exactly what we expected it to be because now it with call system out println uh, method with my var as the argument and it looks where is my var oh it's right up here and it has the value hello world now we have many other data types uh, other than strings we have bytes which is just a very small number basically so a byte can be a whole number between minus 128 up to and including 127. So, uh, 127 is a legal byte variable. Uh, 128 is not. Um, this will make for all kinds of fun errors. So, just keep in mind that the byte doesn't take numbers larger than 127. It does not take float numbers either which is a number with a decimal point. Uh, we have a variable for that. And we call it float. Whoops. A float can have decimal points, so we can have 1.4, for instance. We have many other data types which are not really that important. Uh, the ones that are really important are these which are int which is a whole number just like byte but it can can hold 
way bigger numbers. So uh, it can ha hold a maximum value of 2 to the 31 minus 1. So basically just grab a calculator and figure it out, but it's really big. So integers are safe to use uh, for us, for basically any purpose, uh, which is a whole number like 1, 2, 3, 4, which is a perfectly valid integer. Now we also, if we really need to store a huge number, we also have a long, which we will use in Java uh, or Android uh, programming later on. Uh, it, it's usually used to store the time in milliseconds. Uh, so then we need a really long number and this can be just like huge. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that's a valid number, but uh, they, longs can hold huge numbers. So the other data types we have is a double, which can hold large floating point numbers. Um, so exactly how big of a number it is, I'm not actually sure, but you can Google that. Um, but I mean, it, it holds pretty much all the numbers we need to work with uh, in Android. Um, like a double can be 9.1234567 and it will be perfectly fine. This number would not be uh, able to be stored in a float, um, but you can use this number and store it in a double, so that's no problem. One thing we need to know when we use floating point numbers and doubles and ints and all that stuff is that you cannot add an integer and a double without any overhead. So basically what I'm saying is a perfectly valid calculation would be int i2 is equal to 4 plus 5, which would be 9, which is perfectly fine. And we can also use uh, this i2 variable to store more complex calculations like i plus 5, which is this number plus 5, which is 1,239. So 1,239 will now be the value of i2. It's fairly simple. One thing we cannot do is int i3 is equal to d plus 5. This will not be valid because this is a different type to this, which basically means that the integer doesn't have any decimals and the double has a lot of decimals, which means the compiler won't be particularly happy when we try and add these together. So what we'll have to do is convert this one to a double or this one to an int, which usually isn't the greatest of things because you lose all these floating point numbers. We can also declare variables without actually initializing them. So which could be string name and just semicolon. So this tells the compiler that we want to have a string that's called name and we just don't know what we're actually going to put there yet. But this would actually be the same as typing string name is equal to null, which is basically nothing. So it points to nothing. And uh, how we would initialize this name variable would be just call name is equal to whatever we want it to be equal to. Paul, for instance. Now name has the value Paul. If we do this with an int, uh, we need it to call it something different. i4 is equal to, or is just initialize it to this, is actually the same as saying int i4 is equal to zero. 
and as is for all the other data types we've uh, covered here this if we do the same with a double d2 is equal to 0 and oops v2 is equal to 0 and d2 like this would be equivalent and this here <laughs> I haven't actually covered this but this is a comment basically you put these two forward slashes and the compiler knows that this isn't code this is just some random random scribbling from the user side and uh, we won't run that line so here you can actually type whatever you want this is actually really good uh, if you need to document your code like this variable oops this variable holds my name and we usually use comments when it's not obvious what our code does uh, in this case it's very obvious but it's is used when we have uh, fairly complex al algorithms and we need to basically tell whoever's reading it that this is actually what it does and one last data type we're going to cover today is the boolean boolean b we initialize it to nothing and this will actually be the same as initializing it to false and the boolean is just a true or false variable so it can only hold either th either true or false like this now one last thing I want to cover in this video is string concatenation um, which basically means adding strings together and this is a really good uh, way to show you guys how these variables actually work so the variable we started with with was uh, my var which is hello world but we'll, we'll just change it to hello and space and what we can do here is when we print out we can actually say plus and we call it name so what will actually happen now is it will take my var which is hello place it in here and add to the end add the name so we'll then have hello Paul we can also hard code text just in here we just another plus and the quotation marks and then exclamation mark for instance so we'll now have hello Paul exclamation mark this is the text that we actually expect to end up with and we'll save our project and see if it actually works remember to recompile hopefully no compiling errors and we do get a compilation error and this is great because now we can see that the compiler is not particularly happy with this one and as I said this will cause a compiler error because we're trying to add a double to an int and get an int which doesn't work so let's comment that one out and here we can see that possibly possible lossy com conversion from double to float so actually with floating numbers we need to add the F to tell the compiler that this is actually a float we want to compile it as a float and we have a nice little typo here as I haven't been able to spell string right this should make it right and B has already been defined as we can see here uh, because B is here and B is right here so we'll comment that one out as well now we should be where we want to be hopefully yay no compilation error All right let's run our program and we get hello Paul just like we expected so that's been it for the data types just a quick little introduction here and uh, 
For the next video, we're going to do some more advanced programming. We're going to introduce functions. Uh, that will be a lot of fun, and uh, I'll see you guys again for the next episode. Bye!